moving around and like, man, I always grew up super poor. Like, uh, so we moved, first we moved back into a trailer with my mom and then we go into this like condemned farmhouse that honestly nobody should have been living in. I don't even know what the heck we were doing there. Like it, it should have definitely been condemned. It's actually torn down now because I kept driving by and it still looked the same no matter how many years have gone by. I was like, oh, that looks like the same house actually that I lived in back then. Um, so from there, uh, my mom actually moved down to Kentucky. I moved in with my dad at that time. And then that was my high school year. So throughout my high school years, I was always a very uh, defiant person. And so I never really liked authority. I didn't like listening to people. Yeah, there's me and Tony um, with his mom um, back in high school. So I had long hair, piercings. I was in a screamo band. You know, you could, you could picture it. Um, so I was always very defiant, though. And I remember teachers always telling me, like, man, you're, you're not going to go anywhere with your life. Like, you're so defiant. You don't like to listen to people you're going to end up either jail, in jail or you're going to end up homeless. So uh, it was always interesting because I attribute a lot of, like, my defiance and not really caring about what other people think to, like, my success now. Because realistically, if you want to, like, go somewhere, a lot of other people are going to be telling you that it's not possible, you can't do it and everything, and you have to be able to go and do it regardless. Um, and this is another quote that we're going to talk about later, but uh, it's something that really, really hit home with me at a 10X Growth Con is you guys wouldn't have the dream in your heart if you didn't already have to take, you didn't already have what it takes to make it happen. And so, like, that's what I want you guys all, like, really resonate with, and we're going to post that later if you guys want to write that down. Um, But, like, I hear you guys talking about how you want to get your first deal and everything and how you're scared to do it. And another thing that I think about whenever I think about fear is, man, like, I feel fear a lot, and a lot of people don't know it because I come across as this really confident person. So it almost seems like I'm fearless, and I always... Think about courage, and I was really hoping that Carlos Reyes didn't say it. I'm like, please don't use my line, dude. Don't use my line. But whenever I think about fear, because I experience it all the time, is I'm like, man, fear is an emotion, and courage is a choice. So whenever that fear comes up, that's okay. That's cool. Everybody feels the fear. Whenever you're going to go do your first deal, I promise you, you will feel the fear. So the question is, do you have the courage to go and do it anyway whenever that fear comes up? So anyway, graduate high school, uh, I started doing some manual labor. I was like working really hard. I was like, man, man, if I just work three jobs, I'm going to eventually be rich, you know, like just keep making that $12 an hour and I'm going to freaking work my butt off. And uh, after I found out that that wasn't working, um, I like I was doing landscaping, physical labor. And then every winter in Indiana, you have to find a uh, winter job because it's cold and, you know, you got snow plowing, but it's inconsistent. So anyway, going from factories um, and then I like went to Texas one time, worked somewhere, uh, and just kept jumping from job to job whenever I was going back and forth between landscaping. Well, eventually I found car sales. So that was where I feel like I found my calling and like it was like a part of what like was me. I was like, man, this is what I'm meant to do. And so once I got into car sales, I started, I just like went freaking just killed it. So my first year in sales, uh, I made um, $84,000 which uh, I know it doesn't sound like a lot like now, but back then I've never even broke $30,000. So to me, it was like, holy crap, that was a lot of money. Um, the next year after that, I did $96,000. Uh, the next year after that, I did one sixty. dollars then I did one forty, dollars and that was when we started the business. So um, yeah, those are, those are some plaques. So I got salesperson of the month. All, most of those are months, and then four of them are actually salesperson of the year. So uh, whenever I look at those plaques, I'm like, man, that was like months of my life. But it was still, like, kind of small thinking, you know. I was like, man, I'm just going to keep hitting this and hitting this and hitting this. And then uh, I actually didn't have this in my script or anything like that. But I actually went through a divorce because of a lot of this stuff um, because I was just so focused on the goal. That's why whenever Heather talks about, like, think about the end in mind, and that's something I think Ryan does really well too, is really think about where are you going whenever you do get to the end, which is important. Um, But, yeah, so... Anyway, I decided to uh, get out of car sales and then uh, trade the good life in because honestly, my life was pretty good. I was making good money. It was awesome, but I decided to trade in the good life for the great life, and uh, now we're doing real estate. 